Mr. Yakono, our next round of questioning begins with Ms. Lansman. Ms. Lansman, the floor is yours. You have five minutes. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks to um, two officials for uh, for joining us. I want to um, I want to ask you, given given how serious the conversation right now is in the House um, with uh, um, debating emergency powers legislation, uh, I want to know from department officials if uh, it was you ever considered using the minister's authority in, uh, in the Bridges and Tunnels Act. Uh, he's got emergency powers in that act. It's in Section 17. And I want to know if there was ever a discussion at the top levels uh, to enact the minister's responsibility in that act and clear the bridges. So as part of uh, our analysis of, uh, of what the response ought to be, uh, to the situation, especially the blockade, uh, all uh, acts and, and legislation and powers, uh, regulatory and otherwise, uh, were, were looked at um, prior to um, the, the decision being uh, made, right? And and the um, and in with respect to the the, the bridges and tunnels act, uh, there are specific um, uh, limitations on that. Uh, in, with respect to the minister's authority, it has to be a threat uh, to the bridge itself, uh, the structure, and therefore um, what could be done with respect to that authority and, uh, and the blockade was uh, limited. So is it in your view uh, that, you, that you couldn't use the minister's uh, emergency authority uh, on, the, on the Bridges and Tunnels Act to have any kind of evacuation or uh, any kind of clearance? I just want to know what was discussed at the departmental level. Yeah. So, uh, so what we looked at what the authorities were um, uh, in that legislation and the situations where the, the, those authorities uh, would apply. And based on our analysis, um, that there was nothing in those authorities that, that could be done. The blockade was not on the bridge itself. It was yeah. on, on the access ways. And so, therefore, the authority provided under the International Bridges and, and Tunnels Act would not have been effective. Yeah, thanks. I want to uh, I want to speak to you about uh, tra uh, travel restrictions, and uh, it's partly is partly is a conversation to give uh, some in the industry who I think have been um, unfairly targeted um, with ad hoc restrictions uh, um, a bit of comfort in uh, in trying to understand whether there is any plan going forward to make these uh, to have a to to have the department um, um, look at uh, look at travel and tour, uh, look at travel restrictions in a more cohesive way i don 't think we can have a, a repeat of omicron uh, measures um, uh, in in, this, this, uh, in, tra in the travel and tourism i think i, I want to know from the department whether um, whether there is any plan to manage um, uh, travel restrictions that is not on an ad hoc basis. I, I, I want to know if, if there is any data uh, that, is, uh, that or you are able to present to the committee um, that speaks to how you came to the decision to, let's say, keep PCR tests uh, well beyond our allies or our partners. I just want to know who's making those decisions and if it's the department itself. Well, let me turn that over to uh, let me just let me say first that there is data that's available. I know you, that, for example, that we will look by mode uh, at uh, the importation rates, right? The, yep. the positivity, test positivity, right? And, and that goes, that is one of the factors as well as a, a, the public health situation, as I said before, in Canada and, and internationally as we, uh, as we establish those measures. But let me turn it over to Aaron uh, and provide a little bit more uh, detail on this. Thank you, Arun, and, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for the question. Uh, throughout the pandemic, we've been working very closely both uh, uh, with our partners within government, primarily the Public Health Agency of Canada, for, who provides the health advice that, that drives the decisions uh, and, and, uh, uh, and measures that get put, put that have been put in place both at the border and, and, and domestically, and also, also with our colleagues, of course, at Canada Border Services Agency that implement. We've been equally uh, working just as closely with the industry itself, um, and it has been a challenge. 
Um, the, the COVID uh, um, uh, pandemic has evolved rapidly at times in ways that we didn't expect. And so last summer, for example, we started to back off some of the measures. We got rid of temperature checks, for example. Uh, we started to open up some of the airports uh, that had been closed to international travel. And when Omicron rose, as the minister suggested, we took actions uh, um, uh, to, to ensure the health of Canadians. Uh, it, it, they, were, they, they had an impact on the aviation industry, to be sure. Uh, but we took measures, and now, uh, based on the guidance that we're getting, we're easing those measures off. So we're opening up the remaining airports uh, and, and adjusting the testing regime in, in, based on the guidance that we're getting from the health, Public Health Agency of Canada. So, Sorry, Ms. Landsman. Oh, Time that's is too bad. <laughs> Time I wasn't is looking up. at the colored cards. <laughs>